told Schmidt, Miss Sachs Schmidt, Schmidt was a longtime coach and his associate AD was Mr. D. Strong right on. The championships his teams won, the all states he coached, the sportsmanship awards won by his basketball Panthers can be easily seen simply by looking at the plaques of the gym boy. But he was more than a coach. He was a mentor and role model to generations of Johnston athletes and, just as importantly, Johnston students. His tireless dedication to our sports programs and to our school's academic life was expressed daily in a career that spanned more than half a century. The contributions he made to our athletic program are only part of Smitty's story. He was, in my view, a classroom teacher extraordinaire. Above all, he was an educator. He was an outstanding example of the ancient Greek vision that the ideal person must cultivate both the life of the body and the life of the mind. His story of self-sacrifice for the greater collective good can be seen in a quick story. One evening, I was to meet Mr. Smith at a Providence-based restaurant prior to attending a Providence College game. The appointed time came and went, and Smitty wasn't there. Now, those of you that knew Mr. Smith know punctuality was a big thing with him. So I began to worry. He showed up about a half an hour late, filled with apologies, but he was late because he had spent time after practice working with a young, tough basketball player afterwards named Anthony Graziano. See, this was Mr. Smith's approach. Personal leisure, personal time, personal enjoyment always took the back seat to the greater collective good of Johnston Athletics. For many years, Johnston football was personified by longtime coach Mr. Tony Santori. His efficiency, strength, toughness, and devotion to duty came to epitomize Panther football. Like our other inductees, he leaves a glittering record of on-field success, including an undefeated regular season and multiple state titles. But for me, his great input was in the lessons of integrity, dedication, and loyalty he stamped onto our program. I recall one afternoon when I heard him correcting a player, demanding better effort by saying, and I quote, you are not going to embarrass yourself, your family, or this school with that kind of effort. Consider the values he was teaching. Effort, family, school. This particular founding father taught that sports are about, about a great deal more than self-aggrandizement. It was my personal pleasure to see Mr. Santori's sense of dedication in an unusual circumstance. Long after Mr. Santori had retired from teaching, long after he had retired from coaching, Long after he had ceased drawing his salary from the school department, he continued to go in to his son's high school guidance office. That would be our own Hall of Famer, Tom Santori, currently coach of Cranston's undefeated football team. Mr. Santori was retired. He had no purpose for being there except his lifetime commitment to service and to students. This was the kind of foundational impact he imparted into Panther football. So our founding fathers, Messrs. D. Simone, Smith, and Centauri, all of whom managed to achieve great success while imparting lessons about honor, respect, self-sacrifice, loyalty, and dignity to generations of Johnston athletes. The world of journalism in general is in great tumult today. The traditional forms of journalism are being challenged by what some people are pleased to call the new social media. This climate makes our final inductee, sports journalist Mr. John Ford, such an intriguing and important case. Despite the remarkable communicative and economic success of the new social media, some of which demands that we communicate in 140 characters or less. It is my view that the carefully crafted prose written record, clear, accurate, 
detailed, analytical, is still the best chronicle of the human pageant. One may tweak from the golf course, but it is my view that there is still much value in reading John Feinstein's wonderful book on the Masters. I understand that the current first baseman of the Los Angeles Dodgers, one Adrian Gonzalez, has many electronic followers. That may well be, but I respectfully suggest that the real essence of Dodger baseball can still be found in reading Roger Kahn's classic work of sports journalism and American literature, The Boys of Summer. While I enjoy soundbite from the Red Sox London, this pales in value compared to reading David Halberstrom's Red Sox memoir in what, entitled The Genius. Mr. John Ford dedicated his career to the creation of just such important, accurate, and enjoyable written records. As we consider his writing on Jonathan Athletics, we become mindful that the fine written record not only clarifies what happened, but when well done, such as Mr. Ford's work, actually enhances our enjoyment of the event. This brings to mind the immortal sports writer Ring Larkin, who, in describing the failed attempt of a player to steal second base, wrote that, quote, he had an arsony in his heart, but led in his feet, unquote. Consider the brilliant David Halberstam, who, in trying to describe the frustration of generations of Red Sox fans, this is, of course, before the 2004 season, quoted a man who said, and I quote from his book, First they killed my father, now they're coming for me. Unquote. So it was with Mr. Ford's work. Think of the thrill you all felt when, with some Johnston High team on a winning streak, you turned to his column in the Observer and found his classic headline, Panthers on the Prowl. So we acknowledge his dedication to both Johnston sports and to refined sports journalism. We further honor him for laying down the canons of accuracy, art, and fairness that we continue to see in the works of Bill Reynolds, John Galuli, and our own Hall of Famer, Carolyn Thornton Heinechum. So in conclusion, we honor this Hall of Fame class. We thank them for both the glory and the lessons they have imparted, and for the inestimable contributions they have made to the enjoyment that we all take from that long blue line of John.